What's going on guys, Andrew Pilikaki here back again with another video. Today we're going to be looking at a bit of a trade rumor. There could be some talks going around that the Leafs might be kicking tires on a top four defenseman. So before we get any further into this video, I'd really appreciate it if you did like this video and subscribe, join the squad. I'd love to have you guys here. Um, I believe we're on our way to 11,000 subscribers. So again, I would greatly appreciate it. It's free. I know a lot of people who watch these um, are, aren't subscribed. I checked the stats. So if you want to see a lot more Leaf um, news and rumor talk, this is where you want to be. I've got lots of videos on the way, especially the rumor stuff. You guys know I love that. And uh yeah, it's a lot of fun. So we're going to be talking about it today. The Toronto Maple Leafs might be interested in Jacob Chikrin. Now, of course, he's a physical defenseman who is obviously offensively gifted. He plays really well in his own zone as well. He's a bit of a total package. He's got some control on that contract as well, which we will get into. But let me tell you guys where this is kind of stemming from. So um, I'm using the hockeywriters.com right now because they um, had an article up. But according to Nick Kiprios, the Maple Leafs would definitely uh, be interested in trading for Chikrin if the Arizona Coyotes are legitimately making him available. Kiprios said during a segment on Sportsnet's 590 The Fan, it's come to my attention that the one guy that's probably garnered more calls than any player out there right now, believe it or not, is Jacob Chikrin from Arizona. Now, I don't, I'm not sure why he said believe it or not, because I think Chikrin's a great option. I think a lot of teams would be interested. Um, and I mean, hell, why wouldn't the Leafs be interested? But uh, the two hosts discuss his uh, value-friendly contract. And when it was suggested any team would like to have Chikrin's contract on their, on their books, he responded, well, I can tell you the Toronto Maple Leafs are one of them, he added. If you happen to make a deal with Arizona, you get this guy for four Stanley Cup tries at 4.6 million. When you see guys who are now, I think, comparable at double the price, eight, nine million a year, it's easy to see. Uh, and I believe what's what's the guy, J, J, Jason Bourne or something like that. I can't remember his name. No disrespect, uh, but he's on 590 The Fan. Um, that's probably why he said JB. Um, but definitely go listen to that show because they actually do a really good job. And I can't believe I can't remember his name. Um, but it's easy to see JB why he's so attractive, including the Toronto Maple Leafs at four point um, six million. They could make that work. The value of that contract is incredibly unique. So this one would garner the attention of a Jack Eichel for pieces. Now, when people probably see that they think all oh, the leaves of course they they're they're in on everybody but no this this would make the most sense for them this is a quality defenseman who's can eat top four minutes can play at a high level all over the ice and has a contract for the next four years at 4.6 million dollars mind you and he's right defensemen who are comparable could be anywhere to the six to the eights to the nines anywhere around there i would believe if jacob chicken was a free agent going into next year i mean his price would definitely have to start at six million would it not when you look at his numbers he's like i said he's physical he puts up numbers he's young um just look just look real quick here he's six foot two 220 pounds he's 23 years old um and looking at these numbers he's produced since he's come into the league gradually increasing the 2020 2021 season he had 41 points in 56 games played that 18 goals as a defenseman 12 the previous year this year he's struggling a little bit um seven points in 26 games played but guys are we really judging him on one of the worst teams that we've seen in a long time uh, and that's the Arizona Coyotes they are absolutely terrible this year he has nobody really to play with over there um, so I'm not going to judge him based off that you insert him with TJ Brody Morgan Riley and uh, maybe he helps out Jake Muzzin a little bit here obviously those are better quality options than what's going on in Arizona uh, that immediately makes your top four all left-handed but at the same time if if you're telling me that you're going to complain about Jacob Chikrin being left-handed inserted into this uh, top four then you'd be nuts now here's where everybody's going to get really pissed off oh where are the Leafs going to get the money from where, where are they going to be able to afford this now the biggest rumor that has been talked about for the longest time is that if the Leafs are going to be cutting costs there's a few names that always get tossed around that's Alex Kerfoot which let me tell you right now it won't happen Alex Kerfoot's not getting traded um, and a lot of people could disagree with me with that but I will definitely make a video on that Justin Hall which definitely oh and I believe that guy's name was Justin Bourne 
that was it. Justin Bourne. Sorry. Um, I no offense to him. I really I, I do believe that's his name from Fan Five Ninety. But Justin Hall, um, he's a guy who, if you're, you know, gonna go out there and get another top four guy, the Leafs would go with Sandine and Lilligren with Dermott as the extra defenseman, um, for the five six seven spot. Uh, so Hall would immediately remove two million dollars from the books, and I would imagine he would possibly be a piece that could be involved in a trade like this if it were to happen i'm not saying it's going to or it's even imminent or anything like that if they were talking i would imagine arizona would at least at least, at least like to get a guy that can chew up some minutes uh and is a quality defenseman i mean justin hall isn't playing that great for us but at the same time he's quality he's not great but he is an above average NHL caliber defenseman in my opinion and I mean above average not like a guy that's from the minors that you just throw into chicken and spot because oh well now we need another defenseman no you need a guy that can at least chew up some minutes you're, you're not just going to throw some random kid out there or a guy that you don't trust eating those minutes because you're not trying to be terrible um, unless you are going for that number one pick uh, and then if you're if we're talking multiple pieces, a first and a second round pick, you're you're pretty much guaranteed to involve in a trade of this magnitude and then a top prospect. So it could be a Robertson. It could be one of the Leafs uh, prospect defensemen that they have. Uh, it, it could be another, you know, it could be a multiple pieces. Uh, so you have to look at it a bunch of different ways. But um, I'm not saying that, you know, a first, second Robertson Hall and then maybe an additional piece gets it done. That seems like a bit of a uh, steep price. But when you consider what a guy like Chickering can bring and the value of his contract brings in, the Arizona Coyotes definitely don't need to move this deal and they know what they have if they do figure that they're going to move on from it. So, the and again, we'll look at this contract, $4.6 million for a guy that can give you a ton of value uh, until the 2024-2025 season. The Leafs would be absolutely nuts. Any team would be absolutely nuts not to at least kick tires on this guy. Like I said, he's been putting up great numbers. I mean, scoring 18 goals as a, def as a defenseman on an Arizona team that wasn't good um, and they're still not good. And he is still chewing up minutes. He's still being physical. He's not playing at his absolute best, but you can't expect a guy to be that great when essentially his team is a bunch of guys that other teams didn't want and they paid for Arizona to take on their contracts. And that, again, no disrespect, but that's just the the that's just how it goes. Arizona has been a, a team this year that has taken on a lot of bad contracts because teams just don't want those players anymore. Chikrin can't be involved in a team like that and expect to excel at every level um, or at every um, in every game or at every or I guess any level um, of the game. Uh, you know, any any system, any zone on the ice, he's not going to excel in those places if you've got him playing with guys that are below average or guys that are just not quality NHL defensemen or forwards for that matter that aren't being, you know, effective in the neutral zone and the defensive zone back checking or anything like that. It all it all plays together. And his advanced numbers look really good um, for the last few years. This would be quality. Now, I want you guys to message or comment whatever you want to do on Twitter, comment down below, Instagram. I don't care. It's up to you guys. What would you be comfortable giving up in a trade for Jacob Chikorin? Do you think it's a reasonable trade to think could happen? To me, this seems like the most realistic kind of trade for the Leafs. Defensively, they're not that great again this year. Last year, and the reason I say again is because it seemed like last year they turned a corner. Now it's like they're back to square one with Muzzin and Hall playing pretty poorly. Um, you know, they've got some injuries and stuff like that. And of course, what's going on right now in the world, you know, nobody's playing. But the Leafs need to find a way to have effective depth. I would feel a little bit better having a guy like Chikrin in that top four. I'd, quite frankly, I'd feel a lot better because it checks off a lot of boxes. Physical, young, cost control, offensive, the guy checks off all the boxes. And uh, I think the Leafs could afford to acquire him and could make the cap work, especially if they are, you know, going to make it a deadline deal. Uh, they could, you know, maybe see uh, if they could make it a three team deal, you know, ship off some salary to another team. And again, maybe, unfortunately, a guy like Nick Ritchie um, is a guy that's ditched, dished off to somebody else and the Leafs call up a Hosang or a cheaper contract to fill that spot because 
they can do that. Richie hasn't really been that effective. He started to pick it up a little bit here before the break, but are you paying two and a half million for a maybe? Or do you want to call up a guy for less than a million and see that he's at least being a little more effective? Because the Leafs could probably do that with a few different guys down there. Hosang being the most reasonable and biggest name. So uh, if you guys are new here, make sure to like this video and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think it's unrealistic? Do you think it could happen? Um, yeah, let me know. I've got lots more videos planned at least. I've been so busy and of course with the holidays, it's just been nuts. So uh, let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, I'm freezing also. That's why I'm wearing this too. I, I'm frigging cold in here today. Uh, again, I appreciate you guys. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video or stream. Peace.